Welcome back to this Computer Science 1 video series. In this module, we'll cover encapsulation in C using structures. This module is split up into three parts. In this part, we'll give an introduction and motivation for encapsulation and how to declare structures. In the second part, we'll cover how to use structures once you've defined them. And in the final part, we'll cover how to use structures with functions and arrays. Just working with the built-in primitive variable types, such as int, double, and char, is very limiting. In the real world, not everything is simply a number. Real-world entities are often made up of multiple aspects, properties, or data. For example, a person is a name, both first and last, and maybe a middle name, a birth date, a social security number, etc. A team may have a name and be associated with a city and have a roster of players. A bank account will have an account number, a balance, an APR, an owner, and potentially more pieces of data. In programming, we can define objects that encapsulate multiple pieces of data into one conceptual entity. Formally, encapsulation is a mechanism by which multiple pieces of data can be grouped together. More generally, encapsulation actually refers to not only the grouping of data, but the protection of that data and the grouping of methods that act on that data. This is how it usually works in a full object-oriented programming language. However, C is not an object-oriented programming language, and so it only provides weak encapsulation. That is the grouping of data, the first one. You can achieve the other two, but not in an easy and straightforward manner. C supports encapsulation through structures. You can define structures that group together pieces of data that we refer to as members or fields of that structure. Let's take a look. Here I've created a header file called student.h. Let's go ahead and define a structure that models a student. To begin, I'll use typedef struct. You've seen similar syntax before when we used enumerated types, typedef enum. But now we're defining a different type, a structure. So type definition structure is what this is short for. I've also got opening and closing curly brackets, inside of which I start defining the member variables that belong to this structure. At UNL, every student is uniquely identified with an NUID. Now, the way that NUIDs actually work at UNL is that every NUID is eight digits long. There are some NUIDs that begin with a zero. So you might have an argument here to model an NUID using a char star instead of string that can hold eight characters. We'll go ahead and keep it as is for now though. Neither, one is Neither choice is correct. Each one has its own advantages and disadvantages. I'll also want a first name and a last name. Both of these are strings. As I've defined each one of these member variables, they all end with a semicolon. This is in contrast to enumerated types where I split them up using commas. That was an enumeration, a list. This is different. These are member variables. Let's also add a GPA. Now to finish this off, I need to give this structure a name. It represents a student, so I'll call it what it represents, a student. Note that it also ends with a semicolon here. There are alternative ways of declaring structures. Check out the relevant chapters in the book on what each one does and how it does it slightly differently. This is a pretty good start, but I also want to add one more member variable to represent the date of birth of the student. Now, how do we represent a date here? There are lots of different ways of representing dates. You could go with epoch time. For example, the Unix system represents dates as a single number that represents the number of milliseconds that have passed since the Unix epoch, January 1st, 1970. There's an ISO standard, 8601, that represents a date using a formatted string. So we could represent it as a single number or a single string. What I want to do is I want to define another structure that defines a year, a month, and a day, three separate pieces of data that I want to collect together to form one logical entity, a date. So let me go ahead and do that by defining another structure. I'll call it date. Once I've got this, I can use it in my other structure. 
A structure can contain other structures, just like a structure can contain other variables. There is a problem, however. Now this is only a header file, but we can still compile it to check for syntax. And it doesn't know what date is. Just as with variables, you have to declare structures before you can use them. I put date second here. When it should have been first, because we're using it in the second structure. So the order in which you declare your structures matters. And now it will compile. So let's review. You use the keywords type def struct and encapsulate the member variables using opening and closing curly brackets. Each member variable or field has a type, a name, and ends with a semicolon. The entire structure ends with the name of the structure and a semicolon. Structures may contain other structures, and this is called composition. One structure is composed of another structure. However, the order of composed structures matters. Just like any other variable declaration, you cannot refer to a structure before you've declared it. Generally, we declare structures in header files. And we'll use the modern convention of upper camel casing for structure names and lower camel casing for member variables. There are other alternatives. The important thing is that you remain consistent.